So tell me where you are in, you know, kind of reinventing or re-envisioning this new organization in order to be able to obviously move dollars in an, you know, to an automated buying platform. Like, where are you in the pro that process? Well, the process is a pretty quick one. Uh, if you've read any of the press mm -hmm. in terms of what our timeline is for getting 50% of our media billings automated, it's within three years. Uh, and in order to keep it simple, we started in the middle of 2013, but counted 2013 as year one. So we are about six months into it, and the first several months of that time were spent getting the organizational structure set and also engaging key partners that we knew were going to be critical to us being able to drive an agenda as aggressive as 50% billings automated. So the, in particular, that means our media partners, because if we're automated and there isn't anyone on the other side of it to receive what we're doing, we're not going to get very far. So let's kind of peel back the onion. Give us a little, give me a little bit of insight as to the motivations around the, you know, Siler and his leadership in actually driving this automation agenda. Like what, what's really pushing this from the from heart of it? So there are a couple of key data points that we acquired over the years based on a data stack that we built, a uh, custom data stack that we built for ourselves uh, about two years ago. We made a big investment in it. And in the work that we were doing with that data stack, all manual of course because we can't, we don't have this automated and it's not scalable yet. What we're learning is that things like custom content are generating five to eight to even more than that greater outcome greater effect than a standard 30 second unit. So when you suddenly understand the value of custom content, uh, we knew that we had to free ourselves up from other work that we were doing as a result so we could spend more time on custom. The other piece is that we did also learn that when we take, again, this custom data stack and we apply it to media decisions, whether it's during the planning process or during the buying process, that we can drive anywhere from 20 to 40 percent greater return on investment in terms of business outcomes than if we continue to do media in traditional ways. And when you say business outcomes, are you tying that back to your clients, media mix modeling, or like, you know, what are, what's that, what's the conversation you're having right now with your clients as you take them on this journey with yeah, you? Yeah, it, it, it very much depends on the client themselves and the category that they're in. If it's a media company that is a client, we can get as specific as did we drive tickets, did we drive uh, search queries, what kind of um, simple metric do they have that's very easy to track. When you get into more sophisticated or more complex marketing situations, we, we can go as soft as brand metrics, but we're really talking about did we drive people to the uh, auto showroom? Uh, did we drive uh, some kind of a result in terms of selling tickets? Uh, so we're, we really are getting specific to driving those business outcomes. You, I mean, as a holding company, you guys sort of have one of the most you've laid down the gauntlet, right? I mean, you, <laughs> we and have, you were the yeah. first to do that as far yeah. as setting a bogey for, it's 2016, I think, is mm -hmm. 50%, right? right? right. So 20, Cadrion published 2016, 50% of all dollars will flow through uh, the, the platform. I mean, where are your clients in sort of embracing this? Are they, is there resistance, is there drag? Like where do these, your brand managers sit as far as getting on board? They're, they actually, they absolutely embrace it because they fully understand that what they pay us to do right now is a lot of manual work. And when they see the result that we can drive if we can free up people's time to be more innovative, to be more strategic, um, to drive more custom integrations, they are already seeing the result of that on a small scale. They want to see it on a broad scale. And how is that? So let's uh, let's sort of, you know, again, because you need to peel off the oven. I'd like to know, like, internally from an organization perspective, how are you? What's the DNA and the culture of of you know the shop? Like, how is that changing now that you're moving into this automated world? That's more real time. You know, what's the skill set? What's your bench look like? How's that, how's that shifting for you? It's shifting dramatically. And I think one of the most important pieces is when Matt decided to go this route, he did take a hard look at the organization and what about the organization had been keeping us in a stuck place. There's plenty of us in the industry who have been driving a change agenda for a very long time, but you always run into these barriers that keep an organization from really being able to move forward and take advantage of it. So what he did is he simplified P&Ls. 
he took the internal competition out, out of the equation so that everybody was aligned behind this very simple strategy, 50% of our spend into custom content and 50% into automation. And so now the organization is very clearly lined up behind that. And as a result of it, we're able to move at this really fast pace that he's expecting of us. And I mean, you know, there has to be drag in the system if we sort mm -hmm. holistically in the ecosystem, right? I'm saying that's just, that is holistically, it's not just within Magna. I mean, where is that drag right now? Is it on the sell side? Is it on the buy side? Like, where is the greatest resistance do you feel to sort of moving more and more dollars into, into automated platforms? Yeah, I think, so the biggest drag is still gonna sit with in cracking television, right? And television the way that you are defining it. And if we wanna get to 50% of our media spend uh, automated, it has to be TV because that is where the lion's share of the spend is going. Mm -hmm. I will say that what I've seen, again, having been driving a change agenda for a very long time, I'm seeing a big shift with media partners. And so you can go to the big media companies and 90% of them, not 100%, 90% of them are saying, yes, I understand and I need, to, I need to go that way too. So they understand that they have too many people doing manual labor. A lot of them grew up through acquisition, so they've got systems that aren't linked together. They're investing a lot of time and energy and money into automating their system so that they can be a better partner with us, which is a big step forward. Um, the other piece is that they also understand that we have new rating information, new data in our hands that allows us to really understand at the tactic level what's driving eventually to the kind of business outcomes that we're signing up for to drive for our clients. And as a result of that, they want to participate in that. They don't want us to have you know, secrets behind the curtain on how we're valuing their inventory. They want to understand what value their inventory actually has. And in some instances, things that they pay a lot of money to produce may not actually be driving the right kind of business outcomes for advertisers. So it can change the way that they think about their programming. And mix. you're helping them see that, obviously, by the data tech. Yeah. So just to sort of you know bring it uh, full circle, I would love to hear other than, because obviously your success and where you are in your career suggests that you are about getting the ball across the line. So other than the finish line, which is 50% by 2016, mm -hmm. what are you most excited about over the next 24 months? Like what, what sort of, when you wake up in the morning, you know, are you excited to go and endeavor upon or tackle as far as what, what the next uh, sort of adventure with your clients looks like? Uh, I think that the biggest, the biggest piece for me is going to be kind of getting to that tipping point where we can start to declare a a big partner in the technology platform space. We have a lot of small solutions that are available right now, but I see so many of the um, big companies really lining up to dedicate the engineering time to cracking a true workflow platform uh, that I think we're going to be close to being able to make some kind of a cornerstone announcement within probably the next four months or so. Great.